Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? It is Mark Link, the director of esports here, back at it again with a Valorant stream. Tonight, we're going to have our UMW Valorant competitive team versus Cleveland State University Green in the NECC Valorant Week 4 Mideast Division. It's going to be a best of three, and we're going to be starting out with Haven side defense. Then we're going to be changing it up a little bit, going over to an old favorite on Icebox defense. And if we should get there, map three is going to be a fracture defense as well. Not a full stream production tonight. Unfortunately, it is going to be me just running the show in terms of a one-man army. Everybody else is uh, enjoying their break uh, here, enjoying their spring break here at the university with midterms and finals now over. Would like to remind everyone of uh, some opportunities we currently got going on. You know, if you're our UMW student and you're interested in esports, uh, please make your way to our Discord. Uh, you can find all that in kind of the About Me and links below and anything like that. Uh, and if you're new to the stream, welcome. Feels, uh, please feel free to drop a follow. You know, we've got some recent follows like Clips1998, uh, Intel Mini, and Intel Sid, uh, and also Mountains GG. So thank you all for following since we've last streamed. Uh, feel free to use those Twitch primes as well. Always supporting the Eagles. We've been uh, kind of killing it recently on that, but we're really trying to, to get up our follower goal and stuff like that for partners. So uh, please consider doing that. Uh, but other than that, I will be live back with you here in just a minute to get game one started uh, once we are in agent selection. But be back in just a jiff. And it does look like we are back already. This should be a very interesting match head-to-head. -head. Uh, we do know that uh, CSU has favored Haven uh, throughout this entire uh, series so far in terms of uh, their season. Uh, and the boys are also no stranger to Haven. You know, been playing on this map for a long time. Uh, one of the first few maps here within uh, Valorant to, uh, to go live. And, uh, you know, I remember during the beta, everybody absolutely loved Haven. Uh, Haven and Bind, right? Haven and Bind forever. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, Bind, rest in peace. Uh, you know, some say gone too soon. But I do know that Breeze, uh, Breeze was a, a fan favorite uh, to leave the map pool. So definitely very happy to have that split with Lotus. Uh, you know, Lotus, kind of a, a similar map to, to Haven in terms of three sites, but a little bit more attacker sided focused. Now, it does look like we are going to see both a, both an Omen and a harbor out of the side of CSU. That is a very interesting combo indeed. We'll have to definitely see how they uh, choose to attack and definitely a very attacker heavy comp. Do have to wonder if we do go into the later half of attacking side on our end, if harbor will be able to you know stick up to pace in terms of as a competitive uh, defensive side of the agent, but uh, only time will tell on that front. I'm Bowser. Thanks for the Eagles, by the way. Appreciate that. We're going to take a quick second here just to make sure our replay cam is working. So let's see. Let's see if that lovely replay cam is working. And it does appear to be so. Fantastic. Well, that just means we will definitely make sure to have all of the action for y'all. We're definitely going to start it off with our tried and true. The man, the myth, the legend is going to be Zipper. Pretty stock standard comp here in terms of the breach raise for the boys. But we will have to see how they utilize the uh, grenade here grenade. early on. Nate is going to go flying. Z is going to be able to spot one. But it does look like long control is going to be taken by them. Now, there was some damage on the other side in terms of informational spot gathering by Z, but it actually is going to be Brandon that is able to find the one quick there. pickup, but it does look like he's going to fall off as well. Oh my god, and the peak, the Go second, and Mason absolutely with the headshot, starting us off absolutely strong here on Haven's side. 
Gotta be patient. One enemy and it remaining. is gonna be the peak that actually occurs as well. That is blasting and with them. only one enemy left, flawless. he's gonna be run down by C. A flawless <laughs> round here to start us off for the UMW Eagles. Let's go, boys. Solid start. Did a really good job there of just picking apart the enemies. Really patient there by Diamond, baiting for death to get that swing angle. Super crucial, making sure that our, our you know uh, armor stayed up as well. I actually am unsure if we got tagged at all throughout the course of that round. Going Astro, guys. It's going to be Z with the uh, Vandal by. But it does look like the information is going to be known that it does appear to be more of a C B side of hit. Destroyed. Placing four spawn grenade out. Four grenade is going to be traded out. But it is Mason. He's going to be able to walk up with the Bucky. Without the obscuring vision. Information is going to be gathered. However, it is going to be Jack, knowledgeable of CSU's position potentially. Potentially unsure for long, but it is going to be the stun close towards short, and they are going to understand that the execute is imminent. Are going to be live with Brandon that does take first contact and does pick up on the harbor. It is going to deny plant, but unfortunately no plant yet to be had. Does look like they understand potentially that there is going to be one mid, and it is going to be Tyler with the read. On the potential flank there from the CSU Reina. That is going to break the boys up 2-0. Only losing one there in the second half. Going into a successful eco round third. I'm going to take a quick moment to thank Tally G with this prime subscription. Thank you for that. Really appreciate your support of your UMW Eagles. Get dirty, go wash. That is going to be Mason playing more alone here on the C site. But playing really close, understanding that they are going to have the rifle advantage here. is going to be able to take some initial Placing damage, but grenade. we'll notify them that there is at least one towards the long side. Now we are going to be holding hands here live, and it is going to be quick to be a fight here between these two. Is going to wait for one more potentially, but is going to pick up the Phantom and back up quickly. That is going to be the boys picking up almost a semi-free one. 30 seconds left. It's going to be Brandon that finds one and is able to actually pick up the SMG as well. It's going to go for a quick fire, but it's going to do some damage. It's going to be left alone with Jack on site, who is going to get a full blind. It does swing, but unfortunately is not found. It's going to be the Bucky Mason making an absolute okay. damage central. 10 seconds left. Satchel out. We have to ask, is it able to stop the plant? It is. With that, it does appear the tower is going to go on site, but one we are going to end remaining. up in a one-on-one -on -one situation. <laughs> oh, it is going to be Z, unfortunately, that is going to miss the jump from above. But still, a great economic damaging round on the side of UMW, killing all but one of the rifles. And therefore... It is going to be 2-1, but it is going to have to be a somewhat kind of lighter buy out of the side of CSU. Turret out. Alarm bot out. 
does look like we are going to have once again that mid garage aggression outside of CSU. But it is going to be Tyler. Ready and able and is going to do quite a lot of damage. Spray down is going to actually be able to find the Reyna. Do you have to be slightly worried about being spammed out here? But it is going to be Tyler that finds one. Tyler that finds two, making that three in the round total so far. But it is going to be noted now that it is a B site. Brandon is unfortunately going to fall. However, the information is available that it is going to be one close. And it is going to be Mason with the quick cleanup, securing the 3-1 round. Let's take a quick look again at Tyler there, though. Doing a great job of controlling the garage. Both with the first initial spray to find the Reyna. Those, those mollies doing so much damage. Especially not potentially with full armor on the Reyna from being so low HP in terms of the last round, but it is also going to, you know, take his time, one and two, with a quick reposition. Great play by Tyler. Now it does look we, we could potentially have a combination play here, and it is going to be the one and the two, and that is going to be the nade that is found with the boys backing up quickly to follow. Potentially working his way through, but that is going to be one found by Z and backing up quickly, recognizing more than one. The reload is going to come through. And it is going to find one as well. Z with three. Z with four. And we're going to go ahead and save it now because we're assuming it's going to be the fifth. He wants it. We know he wants it. He's tucked up top. Is going to flash for it, but it is going to be Z that gets the ace. Let's go, my guy. Absolutely fantastic play there from UMW. However, definitely the highlight for sure is going to be that nade combo suck. Making the difference there. Let's watch it again. Z going for the security. Does see it. Sees the flash. Says, I'll just stare you down instead. And that is going to be 4-1. Getting ready to go here into round six. Out. Now, a little bit of a, a lead here, you know, a little bit of a run now for UMW, and this is going to allow them to really start playing with their economy well. Um, you know, if the boys can continue to secure round after round like this, especially with an attacker side, a comp like CSU is running, this could be a very quick haven uh, if they don't find themselves in a little bit more of a comfortable position here. Colby is going to identify the pre-firing that is occurring towards C long. However, we also are going to have Jack understanding that we technically don't no have any noise over run. towards A site. And it is going to be the shuffle, step, dance, maneuver. But unfortunately, none are going to be found in terms of the ultimate. It is going to be the enemy Reyna that is able to walk up, though. I suggest like you move! It could potentially be a B-sided no. hit. Boys patiently waiting. Understand though that this this could be a delay, a delayed hit, a bait. Unsure. It's gonna be one. Is gonna be two found by Tyler. Good job securing that site. And it is gonna be Brandon with the click cleanup as well. Have they identified the last player to be Garage? It does appear that they have. And that's gonna be three by Tyler. And it looks like the boys are just looking like they want to run away with this. Absolutely phenomenal play coming out of both Brandon and Tyler that round, but also this whole game. I mean, you know, we're, we're currently sitting on two only one one unfortunate deaths from uh, both Z and Tyler, you know, and, and nobody by far is playing bad here. Even Jack with the five assists is, is definitely doing his job here on that breach. Turret out. Oh, here we go again. Are we going to see it? Grenade. The combo is going to go out once more. And it is almost going to be an elimination, but the heal does come out. Oh my gosh, crazy. Oh. Pardon me, it wasn't the heal. It was actually just the fact that it was not. Oh. Ooh, that is going to be Jack getting dinked. It was the snare tether, actually. That was uh, reducing to the HP. I swear I play the game. And 
does look like the boys understand that it is probably going to be a B hit. So we do have the two-sided A flank moving quickly. Wow, Taking that they've back. been found out. There's an understanding that it could potentially be one, but that is Z going to be finding the spike as well. That makes it two. Quick to transition as well. And it is going to be Brandon that finds one. And potentially Brandon that finds the second as well. All deagle shots are missing. It is going to be knife out sprinting away, but it is going to be Tyler that finds the elimination. A great flank by the boys understanding the economy. And uh, only only losing one. Only losing Z initially in the quick trade. Uh, but definitely a great shot by them uh, in terms of at least finding one there. Also want to take this moment to shout out our boy Zerwi, the Clutch Master, Colby Clutch, in the chat. We appreciate you showing up, even though we know that you are on spring break enjoying your holiday, my friend. Always love having you around. Can it happen again? The combo. It looks like they are going to be ready for it once again. We'll be interested to see if we get another tether snare combo throughout the, the course of the series. Uh, but for now, looks like they are going to yeah. be reading that well. In terms of uh, starting to condition and understand how the, the boys are looking to play. It's going to be Tyler that is able to find some. But it's going to be Mason unfortunately found there. And it does look like it's going to potentially be a 4v5 retake on the side of the boys. Not yet securing garage control, but all in good time. Flash is going to come down, but it is going to be the lockdown that is really going to secure the site as well. Looks like the boys are really looking to take their time here. Potentially one garage, and it is going to be Tyler that is going to be able to move quickly. It's going to be found on the trade in terms of the distance. That is going to make it an even 3v3. And it is going to be one left. Look, I'm going to be holding. And potentially fully having the defuse. Let's see. Is going to get it with .19. A great retake and a good way to play for the ultimate ability in terms of the lockdown. An insane flick by Tyler to identify the omen. Uh, a little bit unfortunate that we did lose one in terms of the run out. Not identifying the uh, the back spawn location here on C site. Uh, in terms of uh, that the lockdown quite didn't reach that corner. Uh, but an overall good execute. Good trades on the one for ones in terms of C long. That's going to make it pick up the boys their seventh round. Going into the better the better half here of, uh, of, of half one. You know here on defender side Haven. Uh, is going to have to be another eco round forced out of CSU. Uh, we'll have to see what they look to do with that, but it does look like it's going to be some form of mid garage aggression again. Oh, I really like this play from the boys, though. Uh, conditioning the normal walk up, but this time are going to be playing aggressive. There is going to be a little bit of a gap. That is going to be the boys finding two, but will they overheat for the information? It does not appear so. Dog is going to lead the way, but it is going to be Reyna that is going to find Jack. But they are going to identify that they are falling off. Like the boys are going to disengage. It's going to be Z that is feathering that A long angle is going to actually take this moment to also pick up Orb. We're going to stay on board with Brandon here as he looks to defend the B site. Smoke is going to come out with the time winding down. There is a good chance that they assume that this is going to be the hit. It's going to be Tyler picking up one. And Diamond find the hit. Diamond is going to find the hit and also the spike. spike. And with that, One the delay enemy. begins. Then it's going to be Brandon hopping out of the garage and finding the second as well. A good identifier in terms of that it might be a C hit. Um, CSU there, you know, really playing well. You know, playing to the to the strengths of their weapons in terms of making sure those, those close quarter engagements. Uh, a little unfortunate with the harbor pick early, but uh, overall not a bad round from them. Uh, you have to wonder, though, maybe did they delay taking or hard committing to a site a little bit too much. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see by that. Uh, thank you for the Get Dirty Go Wash while Cosmic. We appreciate your support, uh, and always good to see you in chat as well. Oh, you know what time it is. Looks like the boys are back at it again. They really want this combo again. Will they get it? Probably not. 
unfortunate that there is going to be no one there but it does look like it is going to be a quick and fast mid hit is going to be jack that picks up one but looking for more as he's going to send at least two into the sky and knows it and that is going to be cribs picking one up with the molly as well forcing them to fall off now we will have to see and it is going to be informationally picked up tyler heard the omen ult understanding the play and that is going to be bombed down as well we didn't see that on the initial take the boys spamming through almost finding the arena as well they've got to know that there's at least one back spawn window the spam is imminent we're sure it's coming Boys really playing patiently here, both in terms of the economy, but also the numbers. I am curious if Z's going to get the read, potentially see a shoulder and notice right through. There. He is going to understand. Yeah, yeah, he understands it. He understands that rain is low. He's waiting on it. He knows it's coming. Oh, there's the full spray, and it is going to come through, and it is going to be Jack that picks up the one, unable to find the second. But presumably quickly traded here, and it is going to be Brandon picking up the final elimination as well. That is going to make the boys 9-1. A dominant half on Haven defensive side so far against CSU. And it does look like a timeout is going to be called. Uh, you know, definitely de definitely looking to take an attacker side of timeout. Uh, potentially a little bit too late in terms of, you know, is this game already potentially too far gone? You know, we now find ourselves in a situation where if UMW comes... Uh, you know, off swinging off the back half, especially attacker sided, you know, with all of these uh, closer angles, you know, towards garage and, and other things. We have to wonder if uh, if they can run away with it here on attacker side, uh, especially if uh, if they do win that pistol round. The boys also coming off a win last weekend, actually getting the first 13-0 on game one of last week's series. Uh, the first one actually in, in the university's history. Uh, I know the boys are really excited about that, and oh, oh, so close to, to doing it again today. But but it is going to be the the nine one current score. Um, but you know, I, Icebox, we we've got some tricks up our sleeve, and we'll we'll definitely be interested to see uh, how CSU is ready to respond to that. But with the boys playing defense uh, on all three maps uh, right now, can't say that we're we're off to to too bad a start in terms of that. And we'll we'll have to see how we uh, continue here as we get ready to enter the final rounds here of the first half. going to be mason that is being found unfortunate we are going to have the grave site that is determined right there but we are going to have jack picking up one onto the reina and it looks like brandon is going to be ready for the flash peak and is going to peak flash but is going to be found fully sprayed and it oh and the a main control is lost I suggest you move. this is potentially extremely bad for the side of umw as we know that it was an eco round in terms of the spectating, but an unfortunate round nonetheless. The first round, actually, I believe that a main control it was somewhat given. It is going to be Tyler ready. that is able to find one and is going to move to potentially look to re-aggress. It's going to be the boys taking the retake as well. And that actually is the ultimate. That is down. Which means it is going to be a retake. Double shock dart is going to come through. But the damage is not done. And that is a 2v4 retake. And a quick pickup by Z is going to secure the round. 10 to 1. That was potentially a, a game ending flaw there by CSU. You know, not being able to play on site. Sova doing a good job of trying to play offsite in terms of for the lineup, but the rest of the team really just was not unable to, to hold back against both Z and Tyler, you know, two of our top fraggers here on Haven. Turret out. Take hold. It's going to be the stick combo that is unfortunately not going to find much. It's going to be one, make that two, potentially trade it for the three. Is going to be the three, and this is just one looking remaining. brutal as there's only one man left alive. 
is going to be the harbor, is going to be long. It looks like the boys have figured out the information and understand where it's going to be. And that is going to be Tyler picking up the three, Pete, making it 11 to one as we go into the second half. Switching sides. Boys are definitely feeling themselves today. Also forgot to mention it at the start of this game. But we are going to have our boy UMW Diamond. Our boy Mason is going to be subbing in today for Colby. Uh, like I said, Colby went home early for break. Be with family. We absolutely love it. Uh, but, you know, going to have to play our Valorant. And so far, making it his, his great debut is the, is the Bucky God back uh, into the squad on main roster here in the fall. Taking more of a sub spot on during spring due to some class issues uh, in terms of class conflict scheduling. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get back right into the Valorant as we look to take a what seems to be C Garage split hit here on the first round of the second half. See, I do like the harbor wall here in terms of the information that it allowed gathered. Did did allow for them to, to push up all the way up A main, and you do have to wonder if UMW is going to be ready for this quick of a flank. Does look like the boys are going to at least get out onto site at a minimum. Frenzy is going to be traded, and that is going to be a 4v3. One has been identified in terms of the long angle. Oh, and that is going to be a Frenzy finding one. We do have to wonder, though, is it going to be potentially a long angle? CSU is going to find one through the long. It's going to be a 2v1. Brandon's going to push, but is unfortunately not found. And it is going to be Joker coming out clutch there for CSU. Both with the initial push up with the wall towards A main side, but also making those kills count in terms of taking the pistol round away from UMW and potentially looking to stop the momentum halt. We will have to see if UMW elects to force here. But it looks like it's going to be all eco from the boys. Want to really play this smart. Understand that while the rounds are nice and, you know, getting to map too quickly is efficient. More focused, more, more, more focused on ensuring the, the game win overall. Do like the shorty buy that is coming out, though. It does look like it is going to be just an absolute sprint up fast on to B site. Spike dropped. Oh, and it is going to be Jack that sprints through on this smoke. Ah, tower down. We're going to be live with Tyler, who is tucked. Tyler is going to be able to find one. And that is going to be one at least, if not more, does the damage. Gonna be alive with the shorty as well, but it is gonna be Mason. Unfortunately, left alone. It's gonna be Brandon with the damage. It's gonna get the elimination on one. Potentially look to use the stun and is. Really playing for the time and is gonna find the one. Unable to find the second, but is time gonna permit it? And it does not look like it. It looks like UMW is gonna take the round, making it 12 to 2. CSU doing a really good job there of finding the eliminations, but unfortunately Match point. not counting the clock. And that is going to be the spike that is detonating, giving the round over to them. Now, this is an unfortunate blow to CSU's economy. Now, we know they're going to have to force like their life depends on it because their back is against the wall here. But it is going to be full rifles against a shambles by on the side of CSU. Does look like the boys still want to take themselves a little bit of mid control and spacing. But ultimately, I believe this one might end up towards A main side as it would be playing to the rifle's advantage. See a very different pacing now on the side of UMW. Really waiting for the potential opportunity for the enemies to walk into them. It does ultimately look like I said it is going to be towards the A side. We're going to take the quick clears here. One footstep is going to be heard. Is going to 
is going to be found. Does look like Short is going to be stunned. And it'll be live as we walk out of the there. Quickly traded. And that is going to be two found by the boys, making this a 4v3. Information is also going to be gathered that there is at least an omen on the flank. Is going to be live with Jack that takes the fight, but unfortunately bad timing. 30 seconds left. CSU is able to find the rifle shot. This might just make the difference. Information is going to be gathered on the omen, but it is going to be Tyler that gets the pickup. And it does look like they've identified potentially one, if not two, and that is them lining up, and that is them mowing them down. A 13-2 defeat on the side of CSU. UMW is going to take map one in a dominant fashion. Absolutely superb play by the boys. Almost all five of us ending in the top average combat score rating within that match. Some really crucial key important rounds. Uh, you know, the 14-3 the bomb defender win really making the difference there in terms of not allowing for the uh, potential comeback on the side of CSU. Thank you all for watching. In terms of game one, we will be right back with game two, which is going to be icebox defense in just a moment. But don't go anywhere. It's going to be an intense and, and potentially very interesting comp coming out on Icebox. See you in a minute. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are here live again. And it is going to be Icebox Defense to start us off. We're going to have Z rocking the good old-fashioned jet we know and love. Brandon on that signature. Sova, Cribs is going to be rocking none other than the KJ. And we are actually going to see Jack on Viper. Now, not a traditional agent that Zach normally plays, but it is going to be the first showcasing of Harbor. 
here on Icebox Defense. This has been a strat that we've seen not only here, but a lot in the VCT recently. And and the boys definitely, definitely very excited to, to show this out. Now, CSU, it does look like we're going to get a little bit of a mirror matchup here in terms of the Sovas, Killjoys, and Vipers. You know, very, very strong agents for the map. Uh, but we'll be interested to see how they choose to round it out in terms of their duelists. You know, will they go for uh, the Reyna again? You know, choose really your find agent. The success we were looking for uh, in terms of that. But it is actually look like they're going to run the no duelist comp. Uh, instead of going to opt for what looks like the Sage uh, and uh, the Sky. So it's going to be a lot of information gathering abilities on the side of CSU. And we'll have to see how they play around that. Um, but also picking the Sage for those uh, safe B plants. So... Here we are. We're live. Game two. Who's excited? Let's get ready. Let's see some get dirty. Go wash in the chat and get excited for your UMW Eagles to potentially end it here on their signature ice box in game two. Oh, ice box. How we wish for snow here in Virginia. It is going to be our signature favorite penguins, Captain Snowman, and the Lonesome. Sentry. Does look like it's going to be a pretty standard buy across the board. Are we going to see Brandon buying a sheriff? I like that. Very interesting. Very nice. He's going to be holding that mid angle, it looks like, and that's, that's probably what that's going to be for. But CSU positioning here uh, for the A side quick take. And yeah, we'll have to see how that unfolds for them. As it does look like we are potentially going to get eliminations quickly. Here is it's going to be a 4v5 stack into the A side. Could potentially be a bloodbath. When will it start? The pre-fire spam is coming through, but the reloads can't be at the same time. Let's see what happens as they are already up maze, and that is going to be Jack being found quickly. Skyflash is going to come out, but that is going to be spamming as well. That is going to be one. And two found quickly. Is going to be the Deagle with Tyler. Tyler is, is aware that there's potentially at least one enemy coming up mid. Information is gathered, and that is going to be Brandon with the pickup, making this a 2v3. Now, we will see how the boys have to re-aggress here. It is going to be very interesting. They do know the wall is up, but they also do know that the time is not on their side. Oh, death with 3k, but unfortunately picked up by Joker on the Sage. That is going to be 0 one Attacker sided advantage here in the first round going into the second. Boys relatively did a good, decent job of holding, but unfortunately did give them a lot of space. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like Jack was was aware that they could have been up maze there. Um, but uh, no, no worries. You know, off to a little, little bit of a little bit of a start. But uh, we'll, we'll make sure to bring it back here uh, within the next few rounds. Remember that caution, if you are pregnant, to avoid heavy lifting. Uh, that is crucial to, also crucial and important to everybody. But it is look like it is going to be absolute push coming out from the boys. Wanting to make this an absolute quick round. Oh, but unfortunately the eco damage is not going to be done. Oh. Almost picking up the KJ. Needing at least two there. But it is going to be the turret that is most definitely going to spot. Spike planted. We will have to see if Tyler just chooses, <laughs> elects to literally just sit here for the remainder of the round. Is going to make himself known. Is going to try to do the damage. It does look like Killjoy is attempting to move away from this, understanding that she is low. Oh, but Tyler is going to gain access to a Spectre, actually. Looks like he is planning on dying to this bomb, but more so just wants to do the damage. And the damage he will, as he's going to pick up one, make it almost two. But that is okay. Eliminating two. Not a bad eco round. Definitely have to assume that UMW meant for them not to get the bomb down with that four-man push. 
Um, but Tyler able to, to make it worthwhile in terms of finding the Spectre and at least getting one more. Uh, but it is going to be the first full buy here on the side of UMW, as it does look like CSU is going to go into the bonus. Uh, but we are going to see one buy up in terms of Phantom Light Armor on the side of Zet Crew. Does look like they are once again positioning for another A take. We will have to see. They are aware of the deep angles. It does sound like they were. I've got your trail. It is going to be Brandon that is able to find one. Unfortunately, found in a reload, but that is going to be two for the price of one. And it does look like we also understand that there is potentially movement, and there is going to be right movement. It is going to be the flank by Jack, making it a two v four. Wave crashing. Just going to look like, look like it's going to be the wave that is going to identify. It's going to be one. It's going to be the spray down, and that is going to be three. For the side of Jack, a good job there on the spray. Nothing but hearts this Valentine's Day. But a good retake, and ultimately a good round, seeing three alive here on the side as we go into four. Really good hold there by Brandon and Z to pick up two. You know, go for the one-for-one -one trade as well, uh, but really just make it so that it was extremely difficult on the side of CSU to hold. You know, the Viper flank, you know, they've been playing one flanker mid pretty consistently throughout the course of the series. Uh, haven't found the most success with it. You know, hasn't really been able to be a, a high impact determiner yet. Uh, but we will have to see if that continues throughout the course of the series or maybe could determine a round or two here as we look to get into the better rifle rounds of the second half. Jack is the menace. Has gotten an ace before here on this yellow box. Will he be able to do it again? It is going to be identified that he is playing towards yellow. Harbor Wall is going to allow him to at least be somewhat safe. That is going to be Bomb going down. Jack is going to be found, but not before Mason can at least get one more. Is playing up close and personal. Is going to find the timing through. Is going to find one, but almost a second. Do have to wonder, though, if the boys pushed up a little too early. No bomb down yet. We are going to hear the reload, and it is going to be up to Tyler. The 2v1 situation. Yeah. 30 seconds left. They definitely know that he... Ending B site is going to see one. It's going to be Tyler finding one. And is going to be Tyler finding two. Clutching up the fourth round. An insane level of patience. To not peek and be flashed by the sky. Really good audio cue to know that the plant was potentially going down. And way to isolate the 1v1 fight. Great job, Tyler. Turret out. It's going to be a more traditional 2-1-2 two, two here in terms of defense. Not going to see that traditional one-sided KJB as we have been seeing more recently. But it is going to be Z that finally finds the one he's been looking for and could potentially look to peek for two as well. Is and is going to find it too. Z definitely now feeling himself after that ace from the first game. And he wants more. There's blood in the water and he knows it. Is going to be Jack that does get some information towards the midside. It looks like he is going to be remotely falling off to play towards yellow. Is going to be identified that they haven't pushed up but so much mid. But it looks like the boys actually going to give a lot of mid control here. Play their numbers. 
It is going to be Z with the third. He's heating up and he knows it. Is going to find four, but unfortunately is not going to get the ace. Still a great job by him in terms of doing the impact. And it isn't going to be the KJ versus KJ. Oh, but it is going to be KJ that wins. CSU making the difference. And Brandon ready and able. Waiting and watching. Ready to pick it up. But that is definitely right there. Sage Pizza Box. That has got to be how Z feels not securing that ace. And, and Tyler unfortunately losing the 1v1 match versus the opposing KJ. But overall, you know, not not bad. Going on a nice three-run three run lead here now. Uh, and, and like I said before in, in game one, this is where we start to get to the interesting part. If UMW can continue to secure rounds after round, uh, here on defense, really, you know, kind of shutting down and making awkward this, uh, this comp on the side of CSU, things get interesting. Um, you know, being able to buy out for the rest of the game can definitely, uh, can definitely do some mental damage as well in terms of making sure that the boys can buy consistently throughout the remainder. The plane drone. It's going to be one that is found. If not two, and it looks like the information is going to be gathered. You should run. It is going to be the attacker killjoy that goes down. <laughs> And it is going to be the lockdown that is destroyed as well. We know the hit is imminent. More so a matter of when. Maze control, unfortunately, is going to be given up. It's going to be Z that finds one. But it is going to be Brandon that early aggresses towards sight and finds another. Z that finds two with the knives. Is he able to peek? It's going to be the information they gathered. It's going to be random in the 1v1, but is unfortunately going to crouch. That is going to be 3-3. A good round there. Nice nice knives on the side of Z. But unfortunately, you know, e even with the, the ultimate denial, both on the Sky and KJ, uh, unable to kind of secure the eliminations that we needed uh, in order to retake that round. like the Viper's Pit is going to be used towards a site. And in good fashion, Enemy too. Up. It does, it, you know, it is known that CSU is pretty consistently hitting the A site here on to Icebox. Haven't really made any sort of long-term commit towards B except for one of the six rounds here. We'll have to see if they choose to actually aggress in towards Vipers. Playing extremely patient here. And it does look like the Viper Wall is going to go up. Is this going to be an inside hit? Thirty seconds left. It is going to be Brandon that is able to find one as well over the smoke. Viper's pit is going to be identified. Oh, and unfortunately will Locking fall. Side. Crucial in terms of the information. There they are. But it could look to be, and it is going to be, Brandon that's able to make the eliminations count. Z finding the quick headshot, and Mason with the cleanup. A great round there. So close on the side of Jack in terms of with the Viper Spit to make it count, but is going to be found out and sprayed down. Brandon, however, saying, absolutely not. This is my site. It's going to take at least two and a half with him before he falls, securing the round. Alarm 
I do love the uh, the flexibility here from the OW, really flexing. Not only this, this uh, you know, aggressive, century. oh my goodness. And look, uh, we talk about aggressive. Look at this, there is no way anyone would expect that fight. Early aggression is going to be able to pick up one, and the boys will just fall off happy and content, knowing that it now is a 4v5 on an eco round. Are going to see Z that is dancing with the devil that is the scout. But ultimately, it's not going to be found. Information not going to be gathered. Jack that picks up another one. Make that three. Could be four if he chooses. Is going to be four here. And that is going to be five. The ace by Jack. I heard it here. Z, I heard you got an ace. Here's mine. Go get some, buddy. 100%. Boys absolutely feeling themselves. Re-aggressing into the marshal there. Quick reload. Before he finishes it up, the 1v1. Great play by Jack. Scoreline is going to be 5-3 to three as we start to get towards the better half. Half 1 here. Does look like there's going to be some mid control that has not been previously taken. Oh, but it is going to be Mason that Spike picks up the mid. quick two-tap. Make that three. Oh, my goodness. That three-burst spray is insane. Fod does look to take it, but it is going to be Jack that also finds one towards yellow. And here comes the shove we know and love. Z, blood in the water, looking for it. Already taking the angles, pushing them deep. Jack holding, knowing is not unfortunately going to be able to find it. But with the harbor is now going to shut them down. And Z is going to posture more defensively here. Wait and see. You know, do they choose to attempt to try to re-rotate back? It doesn't look like they have much opportunity to. Because it is going to be one. Oh my gosh, almost hugging, but make that two with Z. Z wanted to just give KJ the biggest hug. And he did. Right before he finished off that elimination with the Vandal headshot. We love ducks. That's a nice duck. Placing Good job on that duck, Mason. Vamos is right. When with a 6-3, you half, you know the boys are feeling it. Oh, and we are going to have the operator in the hands of Z. Is he going to be able to find that deep angle? Let's see what it looks like from their perspective. Is he going to just hold it? Like a monster, does not find the shot, but Brandon is going to be quickly traded, but it is going to be Z that is able to get the follow-up pick as well. He's going to look to uh, fall off, potentially regress towards the heaven side with the assistance of Harbor. Molly is going to stop the initial plant. And it is going to be Jack that gets the elimination. Oh, but it is going to be the absolute nade spam. Here. It is going to eliminate one of the players as well. Oh, and it is going to be a Viper pit. Defender KJ, this is crucial. But it is going to be one found. The second knows. It's just going to be the hold. As the player is detained, it is going to be Tyler sprinting after for the elimination. But it's ultimately going to let him have it. Saving the rifle and saving the economy for UMW. Turret out. Definitely going to see some different faces here at the top of the leaderboard on this map. Got Brandon with the Oso Signature Silva, and we've got Jack with the Viper putting in the work.
don't do it. Please. Have mercy. Peak is had. The rehold is there. Sova is ulting. Nothing is going to be found. The dog is going to be able to detect the viper towards main. Oh my word. Z. Re-aggressing. Taking space. Oh, but on the other side of the map, we are going to have Tyler in a do -si -do Versus CSU's Viper. It is going to be the pit that falls as well. It's going to be Mason that is able to find two and pick up the rifle. Brandon with the defuse is going to be able to find it. Does the hold come through? Unfortunately, not a lot of ammo left. That is going to be at least a half. It's going to be the hold, but unfortunately, Diffuser is killed. A great molly by Zach's crew, but unfortunately, a great retake on the side of UMW. Insane that we lost two in the beginning there. Very difficult Last situation. We did half. unfortunately miss the dosi -si doe that occurred in terms of mid kitchen, but it did look like Tyler and the enemy Viper were dancing around each other to the bitter end, and then they both said, Hey, wait a minute. Bomb is planted on the other site. Looks like we're going to have to turn around and go back. is going to be some really quick mid aggression out of the boys but it is going to be the a side pickup once again and the boys can't believe it csu doesn't know what a b site is on this run. map absolutely doing the most but they are going to be very smart about using the killjoy ultimate here knowing Fight that umw play. does not have the soba to deny it are going to see jack pick up one in terms of the flank and that is going to live with us out to a 4v4 as we look to retake Water rising. You will not kill my allies. The elimination is actually going to be rezzed. First res of the game here. Here. <laughs> it's not going to be found, unfortunately. One, enemy remaining. One left. Timing permitted. The boys know it's there. But unfortunately, it is going to be the last round going to CSU. Jack picking up a quick 3 peed but the bomb is going to detonate. And that is going to be 8-4. A good half all around. Switching As UMW sides. moves over to offense, CSU, back in the saddle, is going to go ahead and take defense as we prep for the second half here on Icebox. Look like the boys are opting to position more towards the A site here, towards start. However, lots of util in hand, ready to be thrown the second these walls fall. And it is going to be Z with the headshot tag through the box. And that is going to mean that the sky is already low. And it looks like site is going to be given up by CSU. But it is going to be Jack. It's going to be found towards the mid flank. Spike is going to go down. But the question now is how long can the boys delay the retake? Dash is going to be up for Jet. It does look like one is going to be attempted to take him. But unfortunately, we're getting a little bit stopped up here. The boys running into each other. It's going to be Tyler that is able to find one. Brandon is able to find two. Tyler with the quick pickup. We are going to see how Brandon elects to play time, but it is almost out of bullets. And that is Brandon playing the time beautifully, and that is going to secure the round. CSU, unfortunately, is going to lose that, even though a great initial retake by them. Good initial damage by Z on the push. 
but Brandon, the really good jump scouting that make that defuse just impossible. It is going to be a quad marshal by on the side of CSU. They have made their determination. They have backed against the wall. They know this is do or die. They have determined this round. UMW wins will be critical. Revealing area. Doesn't look the information is going to be given. That is the unfortunately scouted Viper that is not going to be able to find the elimination. Z is going to find one as well. But the question now is how many? Oh my good Lord Z dodging bullets left and right. Jack saying he wants in on this, but is unfortunately going to be taken down. The wall is going to push in. That is Brandon with the Bucky running in. And that is going to be a team ace. Three alive left on the side of UMW. Marshall's full bot. And this, this is not looking good now as the economy is crumbling around CSU. They needed to win that rifle round in terms of the four scout buy. I can only imagine what Z must have been thinking. Dodging bullets left and right up on that yellow container. But it does look like the boys are going to opt for a more traditional A-sided hit. Take flight. Able to be found. That is going to be a great shot. This guy ready. Almost hits another one as well. Dodging left and right. The damage is done, but Z ultimately finding the elimination. Oh my goodness, Jack, you mad, mad man. That crit is going to be picking up cribs on the flank as well. This is an important round here. The boys really need to understand and potentially know their win condition. Toxins going up. But that is going to be Zach Crew that is unfortunately giving away the bluff. Oh, Z. Oh, my goodness. The Crouch almost did it dirty, and he knows it. He knows that's going in the VOD review. There's no doubt about it. Toxins and what looked done. like a 4v3 is suddenly going to become the isolation one-on-one -on -one central. Jack finding the eliminations both on the Sage in terms of Kitchen, but also, unfortunately, you know, Zach Crew you know, being good pick towards our side spawn, but is going to give his hand that he was holding under in terms of default plant B site. And this is it. This is the round. This is the all she wrote. Revy, armed with the operator, is going to do what he can to try and keep his team alive and in the match. Unfortunately, isn't going to hit, but is going to be looking all the same. Really wants to make sure that the boys start strong here. Harbor is going to cut off sight and we're alive once again with Jack who is going to try to isolate Poison's these one-on-ones. On -one Doing a good job of remaining waiting but that I is going to be Joker that move. picks up one. The boys are going to utilize Harbor to get onto site. Really slowing down that operator. Two are going to be heard. Jack was going to push up and wait to look at Has he identified the flanker? We must know. And he's going to be found an insanely patient wait.
Tried to do the damage, but four people looking at him. Diamond is going to fall. Zekru with the elimination. The patience on exclusive exquisivity there in the mid angle to pick up Jack. That was insane. The level of patience. I mean, he was writing a book before he was moving from that corner. He was waiting on the flank. Jack isolating those 1v1s great throughout the course of this match, but unable to find it there. Does look like we are going to have another buy round, but it is going to be Z that is found in quick by the operator. We do have to wonder if the Owl drone did spot the close player. It did not! Brandon, a crucial mistake and unfortunately does not clear close. A 2v4. Rough situation to be. Boys are definitely going to have to do their best to try. Last player standing. Okay. Limited to 1v1s, but unfortunately not what getting found. Mason saying that he is going to do what he can. A good shot on the drop here. Mason is going to understand that there's at least one. Got three. Shield's going out. He is going to get the plant money for his team as well. How will Mason Time choose to play this? He's going to flood towards. Decides he's going to push for more. Oh, extremely caught out, but it is going to be exclusively once again with an important shot to end the round. And they are going to wait until the operator is secured as well. Or they are going to get the defuse and end that round 11 to 6. And we might actually have to see an eco here coming out on the side of UMW. But it does actually look like. Yep, and there it is. I thought was for a second they were going to potentially force, but it is going to be a full save. Bye for next. CSU doing a really good job here on defense. Definitely finding their stride and finding the shots that really matter. You know, we've seen Revy with both the scout and operator. Exclusivity with the, the, the just the patience play. I want to see how the boys elect to play Get into out of my it way. as we go into round 18. Knives are going to be utilized. much but it is going to be the shock dart will tyler able to sneak onto the site i'm not sure spike down a Thirty seconds left. Last player standing. It's gonna be Cribs that is found instead. Brandon. Patience. Waiting. At least once one. The patience on this man. And he is gonna find one. Good play by Brandon, making the eco at least somewhat worth it. Oh man. <laughs> That's going to be 11-7 as we do go into a buy round here for UMW. Almost every ultimate up in the entire game at this point. Jet ultimate used there for the economy eco round last round. But oh my gosh, what is Joker doing? Joker, this isn't a montage. What are you clipping? We've got to make sure we stay alive with him here. Goodness. Almost 
unexpected of angles. What is you the elevation? Run. And it is going to be found. The question is to what extent. Oh, the ultimate is not going to be found, though. Placed in an untraditional spot. That is going to be one attacker that is detained. going to be the Viper hit as well. Ultimately, going to be four players detained. Boys are going to have to fight for it to the best of their ability. But unfortunately, Killjoy Ultimate not going down. A crucial round there, and it does look like the boys are going to elect to take a timeout attacker side. Definitely want to make sure we regain composure. Don't want this to get away from us here. Don't want to make it a close match as we approach. Also important, 13. In this downtown, I also want to shout out our other teams. Rocket League most recently traveling to Virginia Wesley University, putting on a great show there at a LAN event, Collision on the Coast. A great tournament held by Virginia Wesleyan and great attendance by all of the you know collegiate schools. We saw Shenandoah, we saw George Mason, who ended up actually winning the event. Um, ODU as well, always great to see fellow DMV local esports collegiate leagues uh, you know in attendance and, and making a show and, and really uh, adding to the quality uh, of these land events you know East Coast esports really exploding right now very very excited for the continued future of land events Valorant actually may also be going to one of their own here uh, if they uh, perform well in an online tournament here come April but that is for a later date for now it's gonna be another full buy round once again, Joker with the elevated up. We're going to have to see what happens and how we elect to make the difference. It does look like it is going to be positioned towards an A site. Almost all ultimates last round. Only one this round. Is going to be the ultimates that are being used, though. Is going to be found by Mason. Wall is also going to push, but Mason with the read is going to also find one. It does look like the boys are electing to fall off. Play to their strengths. Right here. Oh, here it comes. The flank of the century. And it is going to be Mason. The importantly crucial round doing the damage, and we are going to lose a few to Last Bomb. But a great round by them. A good Match flanking point. pressure by Jag. point here for UMW is going to be almost full buys. We're going to see Guardian and Bulldog on the side of CSU. Does look like the boys will be taking long control this time. Are going to play to their advantage. But it is going to be Jack that is ultimately and unfortunately found. That crew with the op is also going to pick up Z. Bomb is going to be able to go down. Operator is going to secure one, and this puts us in a 2 to 5. 
but Mason, unfortunately, is going to be overpowered. That was a great round on the side of CSU, especially since it wasn't a full buy. Going to be able to secure the extra rifles, and of course, still holding on to that oh-so-crucial operator for them. That has definitely been the difference here for defensive side. We are going to once again have a duck party. Both the too cool for school brim duck and the absolutely quack the attack duck. But it does look like the boys are going to get ready to quack themselves right up mid. Make their presence known. Can't stop, won't stop. And they are going to find the shot that matters, overwhelming themselves into mid. Unable to find the shot, but that is going to be the AK secured by Mason. And it's going to run deep as well. Finding one, finding two. Mason, this is crucial. One enemy remaining. And once again, we are going to find ourselves, Brandon, in the 1v1 for the game. But unfortunately, is not going to find the shot. Fode. A nice headshot to eliminate. That is going to be 12 to 10. Closing in on OT here. Boys did a great job of finding their way into B. Especially for an eco round. At that. Almost picking up the win. Mason with a nice play. In terms of eliminations of three. But just not able to find one more. Is going to once again be a full buy round in the term side of UMW. We are going to see the knives out from Z. Never mind, we're going right back to. Nope, we are. going to be Z that falls to Silva ultimate. Ultimately are going to be positioned well. That is going to be Brandon. Does look to re-engage. It's going to go for the one tap. Not going to hit it. It's not going to be found, but it is going to be Exquisity that does find D. two. Spike is down. And it is going to be the pickup as well. 12 to 11. Looking to tie it up here going into round 24. Can they do it? Eagles need your support chat. They don't want this to go to overtime. They don't want it to go to map three for sure. Please, in chat, spam it. Get dirty, go wash right now. They need your support on this. Get out of my way. You this should run. It attempts to push up. But ultimately, it's going to give them sight for free. I suggest you do. It's going to be zero players detained. Guardian is going to be secured. Looks like the is just going to play for their time. Unable to find the one, but it is going to be Mason that finds one. Death that finds one as well. A crucial headshot that is important by Cribs. Now a 4v2 on the retake. <gasps> but it is going to be Jack picked up. Boys are going to be disengaging. Sprinting. Instead, go to that site. It's going to be Tyler. It's going to walk. Oh, so crucial. They're not going to hear the weapon exchange either. 
One enemy remaining. He's gonna walk up. He's gonna have the timing. Tyler is going to end the Attackers game. Win. A crucial round for UMW to avoid overtime. But a great hold by CSU to really make the boys work for it on Icebox. Mason debuting. Coming back in clutch with those harbor plays, at least finding two to three per match. A great scoreline by him. Very happy to see how he's done throughout this season. But for now, that is going to be your UMW Eagles that are going to secure the victory over CSU. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for watching. Hope you all have a great rest of your spring break if you are a UMW Eagle and a great rest of your week heading into your spring break here soon if you are attending any other university or college. Once again, I was director Mark Link back on the saddle enjoying commentating. You have a great night, everybody.